And what I'm going to do is lose your card into the middle of the deck. Your card is now lost somewhere inside, but I'm going to find it. Well, because that's my job. But I'll tell you what, by snapping the fingers, do you think I could make your card jump to the top? Uh, no, no. Well, would you believe second from the top? No. Uh, how about third from the top? Would you believe third from the top? Let me, let, let's take a look. The card third from the top, what was yours, by the way? Uh, ten of spades. The card third from the top should look exactly like your card, the ten of spades. Now you add the card on top should look just like your card, the ten of spades. The card uh, that was in the middle also should look like your card, the ten of spades. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what, I'll get rid of one of the tens. That leaves me with just one, two tens. Unless I wave my hand over here and wave my hand over here, and once again, I have three tens. The one third from the top looks like your card, the ten of spades. The card that was on top looks like your card, the ten of spades. And the card that was second from the top also looks like your card, the ten of spades. I'll get rid of one of the tens. That leaves me with once again just one, two tens. Unless I wave my hand over here and I wave my hand over here, and now once again, I have three tens. Every single one of these cards looks like your card, the ten of spades. I'll, I'll, t I'll tell you what, I'll take one of the tens, and I'll place it over here. That leaves me with just one, two tens. Unless I wave my hand over here and I wave my hand over here and we once again have one, two, three tens. I'll, I'll place one of the tens over here. That leaves me with just two tens. I'll take one ten in my left hand, one ten in my right hand. If I use my right hand ten, wave over my left hand ten, the left hand ten disappears completely, leaving me with just one ten. Now there's not much you can do with one card, but uh, a royal flush, that's a whole different ball game. But what's interesting is if I wave my hand and toss this away, that card stands on its own. Isn't that amazing? Your business card is standing on its own. <sighs> but I'll do it again, I'll do it again. This time I'll rip the card in half, watch. And once again, I'll create this little T formation. Okay, watch. And your card remains standing, balanced on the edge, on the jagged edge, watch. I'll do it again, I'll do it again, only this time with a quarter of a card. Watch carefully. And once again, all I have to do is... Perfect. That, now what I want you to do is take your card and lose it anywhere you want in the middle of the top half. You remember, that's your card. I'm going to take it. I'm going to lose it inside. I'm also going to take the bottom half of the deck, turn it face up, and I'll shuffle them face up into face down cards. So the deck is now mixed face up and face down. I'll, I'll go through the cards so you can see them. We have some face down, face up, face up. It's, a, it's in a random order. Face, face down, face up, uh, face you know, down, up. Up, down. It, it really doesn't matter. If I cut the deck, you know, for example, we could have some face up cards, uh, some face down cards, face up, uh, face up, face down. It really doesn't matter if the cards are face up or face down. But look, one snap of the fingers, that's all it takes, and the entire deck has just corrected itself. Every single card in the deck is now facing the same way. Take a look. Every single one of these cards is now facing the same. Way. But you selected a card, didn't you? Watch, if I snap and I wave, the deck is still facing the same way except for one card, one card only, and that should be your card, the Two of Clubs, is now the only face-up card. And watch very carefully as we take these four nines, clubs, hearts, spades, and diamonds, leaving them just for a second, and cut the deck into four packets around equal heights. We'll take the four nines and place them right over each of the packet. The first nine, second, third, and fourth. We'll even leave them sticking out so you can follow them at all times. Now watch very carefully. Four nines, four different places. One little riffle and the first nine jumps to the top. No big deal, of course. It was there to begin with, but you see the second, the third, the fourth riffle also brings the second, the third, and the fourth nine to the top. Okay, remember the four nines. I'm going to take the four nines, the club, the heart, the spade, and the diamond. I'm going to place the four nines right here. The four sixes go right beside the four nines over here. I'll even leave the six sticking out 
as a leader, to remind you where the sixes are. I'll even take the nine. Nines, sixes. Watch very carefully. If I switch the, the nine for the six, snap my fingers, look. The nine follows the nine, the six follows the six. If I switch diagonally, take a look. The nine follows the nine, the six follows the six. If I uh, switch diagonally again, now look, the six follows the six and the nine follows the nine. We actually use five tens for this book and the reason I'm using tens is all of you, the original purchases are tens in my book. They're all tens of diamonds and we're going to place them in a row. That's the first ten, that's the second ten, that's the third ten, that's the fourth ten. Besides the five tens, I use one other, thi one other thing. This is the logo for my company, Mayor Yetted Magic. It's available on the web at MyMagic.com and the beauty about my company, and you've seen it all over the web, is that once someone purchases something from MyMagic.com, they show that routine to someone, one of their friends, that person runs over to my website and he too buys the MyMagic.com product. Not only do we have DVDs and videos, but we also have some outstanding magic by Harry Anderson. Let's say you bought one of his routines, you showed it to your friend, that friend too would go and, sh and buy it at MyMagic.com. And this, this story is very good for me because as soon as you show your friends one of my routines, they go out, they buy it, I make money. Life is good on the web. Once again, that person could show it to his friend, that friend would buy it as well. Pretty soon everybody on the planet is going to have one of my products. But of course eventually, one of these purchasers is going to take my product that he purchased at the website and sell it at one of those magic auctions all over the place. But it's too late. He would have already garnered the knowledge from that DVD, that video, or learned the techniques involved in the magic. And to me, that makes him a winner, a very big winner. And that's why it's worth buying products from MyMagic.com.